Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Excalibur CCG TV. I am Chris along with my co-host. Randy's not here today. Randy is working in the shop. We're doing some more renovations, some more changes, uh, primarily to the back issue section, which we've shown you pictures of before, how we've changed it out to all these awesome looking little pull out drawers. It's, it's really cool. Everybody has loved it that has come in and got to see it and, uh, and use it. It makes it much easier for pulling out and checking out back issues and finding uh, the back issues that you've been looking for. But guys, uh, Randy's tied up with doing that, so I am flying solo this week. We are talking comics still for July 9th, 2014. And in one of my trademark phrases, the year is now halfway over. Hope you guys in the States uh, and those abroad who celebrate July 4th, I uh, hope you had a great 4th of July weekend. We had a great one here. It's kind of hot here in Louisiana, but it was still a great weekend. Uh, moving on, guys, we've still got storylines to cover, new number ones, and of course, our, my favorites, uh, since it's not going to be our, since I'm flying solo. But guys, uh, <clears throat> moving on, first off, I want to give a couple of shout-outs here real quick. To all of our new subscribers, uh, to, to everyone that comments on our videos, we really, really appreciate it. We got a lot of engagement with our last video, which was really cool. Uh, also, guys, uh, I also be sure and check out... Uh, our top uh, 10 comics of 2013. I know I was extremely late in posting that, but uh, uh, I still think it's going to be a great video for you to check out. Uh, uh, our top 10 graphic novels is another great video for you to check out as well uh, from 2013. Randy handled that primarily. He had a lot of great uh, suggestions, a lot of great reads for you to check out. Another shout out real quick to Brad Campbell for the awesome awesome graphic work that you see here on the video uh, probably right now at this very second on the screen brad we really appreciate it so everybody if uh, when you comment below make a shout out to brad for the great work that he does on these videos i really appreciate it he helps me out a lot it makes my job a lot easier but guys moving on we have a ton of storylines to cover here a lot of original sin some wolverine some uh, green lantern uprising and let's start with that Green Lantern Corps, number 33, Hitting the Shelf, Uprising, Part 6, uh, All's Fair and Love and War, and uh, no one's going to learn that lesson even better than Jon Stewart with this particular issue because it looks like the final battle of the Uprising is going to be here in this issue. If you've been following what's been going on, a lot of changes have been going on a lot of uh, with, with Jon Stewart as with Hal Jordan, a lot of uh, questioning, a lot of uh, changes, a lot of uh, uh, things to make Hal Jordan especially consider whether he should be a leader and to make him rise to the top as being a leader for the series. So you got your final part of Uprising, part six hitting the shelf this week. Also, like last week, this week we have the 100th anniversary special number one featuring Spider-Man. Last week we had this, uh, another anniversary special like this featuring the Fantastic Four. But this week with Spider-Man, we go to the year uh, 2061. We're talking about way into the future here in the Marvel Universe. And we have, we have uh, Kingpin, who has now uh, taken control of the city, but he also has taken control of the symbiote, techno-symbiote suit uh, that uh, Peter Parker or Spider-Man used to have. And now Spider-Man has to rise to the challenge to prove why he is one of the greatest superheroes of all in this particular special anniversary issue. Check that out. Guys, moving on to Original Sin. Uh, just like they did with Original Sin 3.1, they have a separate kind of storyline branching off. With the 3.1, you have Iron Man vs. Hulk. This week we have Original Sin 5.1, which is a branch off series going alongside the Original Sin series that focuses on Thor, Loki, and the secret, the big, one of the big secrets that we are now being introduced to is the 10th realm. We've always known there to be nine realms. Off, off the tree of life that uh, that uh, Asgard and Svartvelheim and all these other Heims have been a part of in the Thor uh, universe and, and Marvel comics. But now we're going to see Loki and Thor find out about the 10th realm. And on top of that, that they have a sister. And if you haven't guessed or heard by now, that sister is Angela. Yes, Angela. So I don't know how many issues this particular... Uh, Spinoff is going to be, but we'll have a couple of them here. We got uh, Jason Aaron and Simone Bianchi on art, so it's going to it should read great, and 
it should look beautiful. Of course, Jason Aaron is riding the regular Thor series as well, and I have loved that. Moving on, we got a couple of other uh, original Sin tie-ins real quick. We got all new Avengers number seven. They must now determine if they made a mistake by disobeying orders that they have gotten, and also how is the Japanese superhero in uh, Radiance going to affect all of that. Moving on to Avengers 32, Jonathan Hickman and Francis Lennell Yu, we are talking about the Avengers 5,000 years into the future. Yes, 5,000 years into the future, and we may get to see what the origin of the rogue planet is, and that's what's been going on in the original Sentai and issues for Avengers. Uh, last, uh, next one I got, not last one, the next one I got, Deadpool number 31. Uh, Preston uncovers a secret from Deadpool's past, but Deadpool and Dazzler are still tied up dealing with Dracula's forces. And in the last original Sentai that I have for this week, Fantastic Four number 7. We have seen that there has been a big revelation for Ben concerning Johnny. Will he be able to cope with that? Also, uh, will Sue and Reed be able to keep the Future Foundation together? And it looks like the Future Foundation itself may be getting shut down by none other than the Avengers. And if you've been reading this Fantastic Four series, you see that you know that James Robinson has been dismantling the Fantastic Four. So how much further will it go with this issue? Uh, last storyline to cover for this week, guys. I have Wolverine number 10. It's the beginning of the end for Wolverine. If you've been reading the series, uh, you know that we're coming up very quickly to the death of Wolverine. And in this issue, it looks like Sabretooth has set his sights on killing a lady named Pinch, Pinch that Wolverine has become associated with, and Wolverine is going to have to deal with that. And guys, if you haven't seen the solicitation and stuff for the death of Wolverine, it's going to be Charles Soule writing it, as well as Steve McNiven on art. And this is like the second time, at least, that Steve McNiven has came on to do art for a Wolverine storyline. He did Old Man Logan with Mark Miller back in the day. So I'm really looking forward to that. Really, really looking forward to that. Guys, for the question of the week, we had something else scheduled and planned. But Randy's not here, so we're going to save that for next week. I'm going to have a little fun with this one. Guys, the question of the week is this. If you could have any superpower, any superpower, I mean, even think outside the box, any superpower at all, what would it be and how would you use it to help people? And uh, just to add some little fun to the mix here, I my superhero power would be that I always had a $10 bill in my pocket. No matter what pair of pants I had on, it was a $10 bill. And I could just reach into my pocket and pull out a $10 bill at will all the time. And I'd help the homeless, I'd give them some money, I'd buy lunch for everybody, i buy snacks for everybody here at the comic shop and wherever else I am. I'd always have a $10 bill available. How about that? I like that. That's a fun one right there. <laughs> so guys, log in below. Tell me, what superhero power would you have? It could be anything. And how would you use it to help the world? I'd be the $10 bill guy. Moving on, guys. We've got a ton of number ones hitting the shelf this week. And let's start off with some of the ones that you've that probably have been thrown in your face a lot. Uh, let's start off with Spider-Man 2099, number one, hitting the shelf. You saw him return in uh, Superior Spider-Man. Miguel O'Hara is here in 2014 from the year 2099. We got Peter David and Will Sliney back, uh, Will Sliney on the uh, uh, writing and art team. And if I'm not mistaken, this is Peter David's return to Spider-Man 2099 because I believe that he wrote him originally years ago whenever he had the uh, series previously. But guys, uh, Miguel O'Hara, he came back in time to help prevent Alchemax from doing the things that they do to control the future. But uh, you would think that he would be safe here in the present because nobody knows who he is, but the adjuster knows who he is. And the adjuster is looking at possibly erasing him from the timeline altogether. So guys, if you enjoyed 2099 back in the day, or if you liked his introduction, weren't really familiar with the character uh, and you saw him as Superior Spider-Man, he's got his own series, ongoing series, starting this week with Spider-Man 2099, number one. Moving on, guys, you've seen the big changes and ramifications of Forever Evil, especially in regards to Dick Grayson slash Nightwing. He's gone from being a, a, you know, a, a young kid acrobat to a teenage sidekick to being out on his own in Bloodhaven and then getting his identity ousted in Forever Evil, then getting killed and brought back to life, and now he's become an agent of Spiral. This is going to be 
a new series, Grayson Number 1, is hitting the shelf this week. We got Tim Seeley and Michael Jannon on the uh, creative team here, and we get to see Dick Grayson now be incognito and be an agent of Spiral and do undercover spy thriller stuff for them. And uh, they keep hitting us with this tagline, so I may as well just throw it in here. You might think you know Nightwing, but you don't know Dick. I know. I know. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Moving on, guys. A lot of fans uh, cried out because um, several months ago, DC just made a big, they cleaned off a bunch of stuff off their slate, including this series, but now it's coming back with the new Suicide Squad number one with Sean Ryan and Jeremy Roberts on board. We see a new Suicide Squad team. Uh, we have the Joker's daughter joining the team, Deathstroke and Black Manta, along with Harley Quinn and Deadshot, and they are going to go cause a ruckus in Vladimir Putin's Russia with this new series starting off. A lot of familiar faces, a lot of new ones uh, joining the team, moving forward with this new series uh, from DC Comics. Guys, one that I've been looking forward to, of course, I'm a fan of the creator, but the preview pages and the concept really uh, struck me, and I'm really digging it. I am working here. What are you digging here? I'm digging. Spread. Oh. Number one yes, is hitting the shelf important. this week. Love it. Guys, I'm here. I'm just not here. We're so busy at the store. <laughs> He's here. He's not here. That was your surprise visit from Randy right there, guys. Going back, though, to spread number one from Image Comics, Justin Jordan, Kyle Strom. Are hit, it's hitting the shelf this week. Ten years ago, we dug too deep, and we unleashed something from the earth that has continued to spread until now. We've been able to slow it to a crawl, but it still is changing people into more of what it is. And uh, what we get to see here in this series is a, a, a lone man with a baby. The baby might actually be the cure or the antidote for this thing, this spread that is going on here. If you liked Lone Wolf and Cub, and uh, I think the writer remind, uh, he kind of compared it to like Lone Wolf and Cub and some other sci-fi concept. I can't remember there. But uh, uh, guys, this is another one. Justin Jordan has done all kinds of stuff. He's currently writing Green Lantern, uh, New Guardians. He's done Dead Body Road. He's done Legend of Luther Strode, uh, uh, Strange Town of Luther Strode. Uh, what else? He's, he's got some other things coming up from Boom, uh, a creator on the rise. This is going to be its a great looking uh, comic. You should check it out when it hits the shelf this week. And guys, like we have told you before in the past, a lot of these new number ones from Image Comics, boom, they fly off the shelf. They become instant collector's items. You're stuck with getting a, a second print or paying you know, a, a much higher price on eBay to get a first printing of number one. So guys, check it out. Take a peek through it. Get it. Have fun with it. And the last number one for this week is, I know there's a ton of Deadpool fans, so I would be a jerk to not mention it. Deadpool, Dracula's Gauntlet number one. With the uh, 27th issue, we got to see Deadpool get married. And he got married to none other than the succubus queen, Shikla. But now in this issue, in this series, we get to find, uh, sit to see their first meeting and a little bit about their romance that led to the marriage but also in this series dracula hires deadpool to deliver some highly valuable cargo and he has no idea what it is or the trouble that it's going to cause him we're going to see blade modok hydra bob werewolf by night and more in this mini series it's a seven issue mini series deadpool fans Check it out. You will love it. Guys, moving on to uh, my favorites that are hitting the shelf this week. Uh, these are the comics that are usually at the top of my stack. The first things that I read when they come out for the month. But before we dive into that, uh, there's going to be some spoilers ahead here. So you've been warned. Uh, I got two favorites from last week. My two favorites from last week, easily. Uh, Moon Knight, number five. And Magneto number five or was number five or number six it was one of those uh moon knight was freaking awesome it was freaking awesome tons of action not much talking but when the dialogue did appear it was heavy it was yes it was just awesome and i'm so disappointed that uh warren ellis and declan Shalvey will be leaving the, as the creative team i am uh, i am interested though to see what uh, brian wood and greg smallwood are going to do on the series but man Ellis and Shalvey have really just got their hooks in into me, and I'm going to miss them when they're gone. And Magneto, Colin Bunn, 
loved this issue. We saw a major change to one of the uh, well-known mutant groups that have caused mayhem in the past. And now it looks like they have been tasked by, Mag by Magneto with a totally new directive. And it's going to count. It's going to matter now. Uh, so I loved what, uh, what Magneto did with uh, the Marauders. That's exactly who I'm talking about. You should be reading this series, uh, digging what Colin Bunn is doing with it. It was awesome. Guys, log in below and tell me below uh, what your favorite was from last week. Because if you guys are checking out Moon Knight and uh, Magneto, I want to talk to you about that because it's been, it's been awesome. But guys, this week, Avengers Undercover, number seven, Dennis Hopeless, Kev Walker. This is a uh, four-part story arc called Gone Native. And if you, uh, any of you Runaways fans are out there, uh, guys, you're going to want to pick up this issue, particularly because this issue, uh, we have Nico resurrected with her dead boyfriend, Alex who you recognize from The Runaways. Also, well, what's going to happen here with Chase and Cammy? You've seen the storyline as it's been progressing and what's been going on with the Avengers undercover and where they are. And we, there has been interesting storylines developing all throughout the series with uh, all three of these characters, Nico, uh, Chase, and Cammy. And we'll see what, how Baron Zemo has gotten his claws into them. Also, uh, Daredevil number five, one of my favorite series. You know, I love it. I love the first storyline with the owl and the shroud. Uh, that's been going on and now in this issue we get to take a look at what happened to foggy nelson how did he die and what's he supposed to do with his life from this point forward if you read the previous series you know that he was very sick but also matt murdoch had to take some measures to protect him what were those measures hopefully we'll find out with this issue and uh i'm looking forward to that because i love what wade and chris samney are doing on this series and last up for me, The United States of Murder, Incorporated, number three, hitting the shelf this week. Brian Michael Bendis, Michael Oming uh, as a creative team on this. I'm totally digging it. Two issues in, and we have got a lot of story that has been covered, a lot of ground and history has been covered in this world where basically the gangs rule the United States. And this main guy, the main guy, the made man, Valentine, has a very, very, important secret. I'm not going to spoil that yet. We need to get a few more issues into this before I talk about what this secret is because I don't want to ruin it for anybody that's coming on board, but you find out at the end of the first issue, which was a, a double-sized or oversized first issue for the regular price of $2.99. If you can still find it, you should check it out. But I'm loving what they're doing with this series, uh, creator-owned series coming out through Icon. If you have loved Powers or anything else that uh, crime-wise Brian Michael Bennis has done, you should be on board. United States of Murder Incorporated number three hitting the shelf this week. And guys, that's a wrap. Uh, log in below. Answer the question of the week for me, uh, for me below. Also, tell me what you're most looking forward to. Are you getting any of the new number ones that are hitting the shelf this week? Uh, what are your favorites that you're picking up? And... What were your favorites from last week? Tell me below. I don't care what it is. It doesn't have to be my favorites. Just tell me what your favorites were and why, if you have a moment. Uh, also, a shout out to the communities that have been sharing our videos. We have syndication going on at bleedingcool.com. Uh, there's a couple of uh, groups on Facebook and uh, uh, Paul Conrad, if I'm not mistaken. Conrad Paulson on uh, Google+. Plus. Thanks for sharing. We really appreciate it. And guys, if you would take a moment... Uh, Hit the share buttons below as well. Uh, share the video for us. We would really appreciate it. Our subscriber count has been climbing slowly but steadily. And that's thanks to you guys. So thanks again. And that's it for this week, guys. You've been watching Excalibur CCG TV. We are Excalibur Comics, Cards, and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana, as well as in Texarkana, Texas. You can always find out what's going on with us by visiting our Facebook link down below or visiting our website, ExcaliburCCG.com. Until next week, guys, be safe, take care, read great comics, and I will see you in the next video.